keeping up with our motto, let learning be a joy and teaching a pleasure. Here we are with a remote teaching and learning process to bridge the gap. Happy learning, students. A very warm welcome once again to all the students of Thakur Vidya Mandir High School and Junior College. Today, we are going to learn something more about food in EVS lesson of Standard 5, that is Food for All, Part 2. So far, we have learned about traditional agricultural work and improved methods of agriculture in Part 1. Now, we will learn more about food. Food storage and conservation of environment. Students, as you know, we all have to store the food at home, shops, go-downs, etc. Like humans, other living things also store food and each of them has a different way of doing it. As you can see in the picture, ants, they are always busy in collecting the food and store it. Honeybees, they collect nectar from flowers and store it in a honeycomb in the form of honey. Do you know that? Honey bees, they live in large groups called colonies. An average beehive can hold around 50,000 bees. Now squirrels. Squirrels, they store food. They collect and store nuts so they will have food to last through winters. As we cook food for us, similarly, the plants are also busy producing the food they need all the time. And this process of making food by plants is known as photosynthesis. Even like humans and insects, plants also store food. Storing the food helps them to use it in winter and survive because there is very little sunlight available. So they photosynthesis less. Plants store food in different parts of the plant, like in their leaves, stem or roots or flowers, fruits or seeds. For example, they store food in bulbs such as onion and garlic. They store food in stem or tubers such as potatoes, gingers, etc. Plants also store food in roots such as radish, sweet potato, beet roots. So these plants store food in their stem or roots. As food is our basic need, so we do store food at home, so it is available to us whenever we need it. Students, part one of this lesson, we have learned about improved methods of agriculture or cultivation. So due to this, we now produce plenty of food grains and as population of our country is increasing and so is demand. Now the production exceeds the demand. The surplus food grains means the amount of food grains left over when requirements have been met or excess of production that is stored in huge warehouses. Sometimes production is affected by disasters such as floods, drought, a cyclone or hailstorm. At such times, the stored surplus grain can be used for the people. It can also be used for people displaced due to disasters like an earthquake or floods. The Green Revolution Today and due to this our country is self-reliant as far as production of food grain is concerned. We are also able to export the surplus grain. The Green Revolution in India refers to a period when Indian agriculture was converted to an industrial system due to the adoption of modern methods and technology such as the use of improved seeds, tractors, irrigation facilities, pesticides, use of fertilizers, etc. The tremendous increase in food grain production in our country was achieved during this period of green revolution. 
can see the picture of Dr. M. S. Swaminathan on the screen. Green Revolution was brought about by the joint efforts of scientists, people working for the spread of science and farmers. The credit for the research that led to improvement in the seeds of wheat and rice that resulted in the Green Revolution in India goes to Dr. M. S. Swaminathan. He is known as the father of Green Revolution. Food security. As we all know, food is a basic need without which we cannot survive. Everyone should get food. Many countries have made laws to ensure that every person gets sufficient food according to their need. These laws are known as food security laws. Security law. In 2013, our country too enacted a food security law which aims to provide subsidized food grains to approximately two-thirds of India's population. It has made it possible to fight ills like malnutrition, starvation and deaths due to hunger. Agricultural Assistance Program Through this program, farmers are given proper information and guidance about the latest technology, irrigation facilities, improved seeds, use of fertilizers and pesticides, etc. They can also get weather forecast and other agriculture related information from these assistance centers. Agricultural schools have also been started for farmers. In agricultural schools, members of a farmer's family can learn about new technology at these schools. Agriculture produce marketing committees. They also hold exhibitions for farmers. The Agriculture Department of the Government, Agriculture Universities, Televisions, Newspapers and various periodicals work for the spread of modern methods of agriculture. Now it is possible for all farmers to use these modern methods to increase the production. The whole country benefits from these efforts. Organic farming It is an alternative agricultural system. Farming that relies on natural organic materials is called organic farming. It is a form of traditional agriculture. In this method, the nutritive substances in the soil are retained. This farming avoids or largely excludes the use of synthetic inputs like fertilizers, pesticides, etc. The organic pesticides used in this method have no harmful effects on those who eat the produce. The grains grown by this method is nutritious and also good in the taste. That is why farmers have begun to opt for organic farming methods. Organic farming involves use of manures obtained from plants and animals. And these manures consist of fish and bone meal, animals excreta, as well as decomposed remains of plants and animals. Students, always remember that crops should be watered only as much as necessary. And care should be taken when using chemical fertilizers and pesticides because their overuse is not good for the crops. Now the time for recap. Whatever you have learned in this lesson, you have to revise that using improved methods of farming leads to an increase in production and farmers can get information about modern agricultural technology like improved methods of irrigation, uses of improved seeds, pesticides, fertilizers, etc. through agriculture assistance program. What is the advantage of storing grain in wetland and top basket? Students, I had asked this question in part 1 of the lesson. I hope you must have found the answer of this question. The answer is that these type of baskets prevent grain from rancidity, means spoilage or from other pests. Grains 
stored on platform in heaps and this bags or baskets and fire may be lit under elevated platforms to dry the produce and to protect from insects or other pest instead of being horizontal and flat the platform may be conical in shape few more question i had asked in part 1 of this lesson name of two varieties of from fruit seeds of jawahar the answer is jawahar cherry seeds and jawahar cherry 69 another question who helped the farmer to dry the mold oxen helped the farmer to dry the mold next question how is ground water lifted these days these days lifting devices can be used to raise ground water like progressive cavities pump manual diaphragm suction pump chain pump solar pump etc use your brain power what is the purpose of storing food grain in our house and what is the solution if the plant in the pot is not growing well i hope you all enjoyed the lesson about food for all keep learning something new every day